Hey there, geometries. This is lecture 6.6 .6 that goes all along kites and um, what do you call them? Trapezoids. Very good. I think I'm ready for a cup of coffee. Kites and trapezoids, and then specifically um, isosceles trapezoids. These are another form of special quadrilateral, but they are not parallelograms. And again, this, this whole chapter 6 has been full of theorems and big concepts and vocabulary. Um, your, your next theorems talk about kites. Right, and a kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of congruent consecutive sides, meaning these are the same and those are the same. All right, well, if you know it's a kite, then the diagonals are perpendicular, very similar to a rhombus, except instead of all four sides being congruent, it's two and two. Also, if a kite is a, quadri uh, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So that's what you see here. B and D are congruent, but A and C are not. What's really interesting here is the pair of angles <clears throat> that is not congruent, meaning A and C, when you run a diagonal between them, B, A, C is congruent to C, A, D. So let me just get a little colored pen here and I'll put it in green. You guys like the color green? So it does mean that those angles right here are bisected, right? They're congruent. And the same thing on, on the other side. Again, they're not A and C are not the same, but they are split in half. And up here, you can see that these angles are not split in half. But man, when you look at this kite, this picture right here, how many triangles do you see? Yeah, right. You counted them. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. You got a lot going on there. All right, so now let's get into some problems real quick. It says in kite ABCD, the measure of angle BAC is 35 degrees. So I'm talking about this angle right here is 35 degrees. And the measure of BCD, this one here, is 44 degrees. So the entire angle here, and this one we're talking about a half. Now what it asks you to do, it says find the angle measures. And the key to this problem really is to note that if this piece here is 35, then this is here is 35. If this entire thing is 44, that means each the top double purple and the bottom double purple are 22. And of course, last but not least, and I better use a different color for this, we'll use blue. Of course, all four of those angles are 90 degrees. And that's critical because I said, again, there's eight triangles here. And having a 90 degree angle is really important. Well, for the first one, ABD, oh, this angle's 90, this one's 35, 90 minus 35 is 55. Uh, DCA, DCA, I'm looking over here, oh, half of 44. And ABC, ABC, what I did was I said 90 minus. 22. Now, why did I do 90 minus 22 to get 68? Well, A, B, C, if I know this top here is uh, D, C, A, D, C, A is 22. If I know that's 22, wait a minute. I think I have an error here. Team, work with me. It wants a, B, C. It wants this really big, oh, I did the wrong angle. It doesn't want that little one. It wants 180 minus the sum of 22 and 35. And I'll bust that out real quick. Look, look, it just disappeared on me. Oh, man. And that's not 68 on 180 minus 22 plus 35. Sorry for the delay in the video, everybody. 180. Come on. See, I'm just doing math on the fly. You love it? No, you don't. You want your time back. 123. Let me just enter this down. Boom. And that's 123. Sorry for the delay. Hope there's no other errors in the, in the video, but I think you get the idea. The next set of problems here says find the area of triangle EFG. Now, the trick here, let's first of all label EFG. So I'm talking E, oh, let me start, E, F, G. Oh, they want that triangle there. Oh, wait a minute. I can do that. That's actually not a big deal. 
area is one half base times height. The height is from this intersection to F, so I need to figure that out. The total length across, well, if this half is 5, that half is 5, so that's got to be 10, right? So I know the full length of GE is 10, which means how am I going to find the height? Well, I'm actually going to use the Pythagorean theorem backwards. So 13 squared, 13 is the hypotenuse, equals 5 squared plus b squared, and you may recognize this as a Pythagorean triple, which is 5, 12, 13. All right, so I do my math. I get b is 12. So now, area of a triangle, half, the base, which is 10, the height is 12, and you get 60 square units. Let me pause the video here because Chandler just walked in. Hey, welcome back. Hey, now we're going to talk about trapezoids. And again, a trapezoid is quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Um, each of the parallel sides are called bases. So this is a base and this is a base. The non-parallel sides are called legs. Right? Base angles of a trapezoid are two consecutive angles whose common side is a base. So this is a base angle and a base angle and a base angle and a base angle. So what it means is these pair would not be base angles. They would be supplementary though, because this is a parallel line, these are parallel lines. So these two added up as 180. But these are base angles as a pair, and these are base angles as, an, as in a pair. What's significant is when you get to isosceles trapezoids, which means now your legs are congruent. And when you get that, it means that the base angles are congruent. It means that um, if you have a trapezoid and the base angles are congruent, then you know the sides are congruent. Now you have an isosceles trapezoid. And last but not least, least is if it's an isosceles trapezoid, then the diagonals are congruent. And the converse of that, if the diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent, then it's an isosceles trapezoid, and you know that the base angles are the same, and you know the sides are the same. So that's kind of the big idea. This arrow here is a biconditional statement. We didn't really focus on much of that in chapter two, but all definitions are biconditional statements. So this theorem is really, it could have been broken down into two theorems, the original and its converse, but they said, you know, you guys, you guys have figured this stuff out by now. You're ready for the big time. All right, so here for an example, uh, I definitely have an isosceles trapezoid because those are parallel and the legs are the same. That means I know my diagonals are congruent. They don't have to be perpendicular, so don't, don't take that assumption. But it says if KB, well, from here to here, is 21.9 and MF is 32.7, find FB. Oh, find this little leg right here. Easy peasy. I'm just going to subtract this longer piece from the entire diagonal. All right, and just a couple more problems. Let me see what else I have on the... Okay, a few more, and then we'll bust it all. So I'll get it under 10 minutes. It says find the measure of angle Z. Oh, wait, if this is 82, this is 82. If this is 82, this has to be supplementary to it, which means 180 minus 82 is 98. So this is 98, and that's 98. Similarly here, just like the previous problem, I give you one of the diagonals as seven and a half. I give you a little piece of one, 2.6, but then I can apply that um, to the other unknown portions on the other diagonal. Big idea there. All right, now it says, hey, find the value of n so that PQRS is isosceles. Again, here what we're saying is, if you want this to be an isosceles trapezoid, these have to be the same. So set it up algebraically so you can find n to make it the same. And if you want to try these problems, please do it. I'll give you the answers on the last slide, but really the setup is the most important part. Now take a look at this one. Find the value of x so that EFGH is isosceles. Well, again, these two aren't going to be the same, but they're going to be supplementary, right? Because these two would have to be supplementary, and these base angles are the same which means set it up so it's supplementary. Uh, again, more algebraic expressions. Find the value of A so that ABCD is isosceles. BD, this diagonal, is 7A minus a half. AC is that. Well, the diagonals would have to be the same. And last but not least, 
Um, kind of a similar problem. QS is a diagonal. RT is a diagonal. Can you set them equal and solve? Last concept we need to get through is a mid-segment. And simply put, just like in a triangle, a mid-segment is parallel to the base, and it's the average of the top base and the bottom base. And that's what this formula shows you in your last theorem. Oh man, theorem 666. Look out. No, what we're saying is the mid-segment is half of the top and the bottom added together. Well, how does that play out? Here you go. Top is 13 and a half, bottom is 8. I'm going to add them together and divide by 2. That means my mid-segment is 10.75. Uh-oh, I'm approaching 11 minutes. Last problem, um, it's talking about a Zagarat, and it's a temple or pyramid, and it says each step is equal height. Give the vocabulary term. Well, if you count these up, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, MN is a mid-segment. And then again, if you want to find the length of that mid-segment, you just average the top and the bottom. Hey, here are the answers if you tried any of those other problems on your own. Um, otherwise, your assignment is posted in Canvas. Um, have a great week or whenever I'm going to see you next, and do your best.